correct. Hey, Sean. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to order, order a food <clears throat> because I'm a fantastic parent that forgot that my kid needed to eat. All right, guys, just stand, stand, stand by. <clears throat> I'm trying to decide what kind of burger my kiddo needs or wants. He's so, he's so whatever, like he'll say, I don't care, just whatever. I don't just, and then it'll come and he'll be like, I didn't really want this. So the double bacon cheeseburger. That sounds like something he would want. with a side of fries. <laughs> Sean, you're picking up pizza now. Like, are you in the car? You're, are you in the car watching this as you're picking up pizza? Penelope. Hi, Penelope. Like your name. Sounds right. Bingo. Okay. <clears throat> oh, snap. I think I forgot her tip. Hold on. No, I didn't. It must have added it in there because a burger and fries shouldn't cost $23 without a tip. So they must have automatically. Okay. So yeah. Hi. Um, I appreciate you guys joining. Um, this isn't something that I normally do, but I decided that I should be more interactive. And since I get, I get so many, um, messages and, um, just comments and just things like that. And I try to reply to as many of them as I can. Um, <clears throat> but I don't, I don't get a chance to do it as often as I want to. And at the, at the rate that I want to, um, I feel like sometimes I appreciate all the messages so much that I, that I want to give you more of like interaction because I, I, I love that you guys are excited about what, what we're doing. Um, and I say, we like, there's more than just me. It's just me. I, when I say we, I mean me, um, and you guys too, I guess you got, you count too. Um, but I want, I, I'm, I'm excited that you're excited about it. And I want to give you more interaction um, and let you be a part of it more than you already are. Um, and, that, and that's why I, I choose almost exclusively cases that you guys send to me. Um, so that's a part of what I'm doing tonight. Um, so for next week, I already, I already know the, the stories that I'm doing. Um, love to meet your dog as well. Yeah, she, I'm at a stand up desk. Um, so she's not even in this room, but if she was, you wouldn't be able to see her. She's a big chunky lab. Um, but if she comes in here, I'll try to make her, I'll try to make her be on the camera. Um, but I mean, this is going to be this, I mean, be prepared unless you guys want to interact more, but this is going to be, um, maybe a little bit boring. Uh, because you can't see, I have an, there's an iPad here and I have a very, very long list of cases <clears throat> that I'm going through. Um, I'll tell you what I need to do. I need to find out. Um, so I will tell you that uh, one of the stories I'm doing next week, um, 
will be this lady that this lady that killed her kids her kid um and i don't know how to pronounce her name so step one is trying to figure out how to say this lady's it looks like if i were to just if i were just wing it it looks like rudier but i think it's not that so the way i usually do that is i find it on youtube i find like a news story And I tried to find where they say their name. So that's what I'm doing now. Her name is Darley. Maybe it's Roots here. Maybe, I hope you can't hear this randomness playing in the background. I'm just waiting for them to say their names. Kira, I think I you a while back at doing uh, Keith Morrison type stuff, though he's story. You're a strangulation expert, Kira? Did I read that right? That's interesting. I, I, the, how do you become a strangulation expert? Routier. Routier. No, okay, she said it. So now, so now I just have to remember that that's how you say it. Routier. I'll forget for sure. Um, I'll have to come back to that video. But Routier. <clears throat> strangulation expert for domestic violence. What does that involve? I know it's probably difficult to to type um th like that's that's interesting to me um i'm gonna have to pick your brain on some stuff at some point um yeah i'm trying hold on I'm reading the comments now uh, thank you cheryl for what's the car car brothers out of wichita kansas i don't know anything about that i'll tell you what um <clears throat> Type that would be great. Okay. <clears throat> this in my in my process, my super double secret process. Um <clears throat> hey Kristen. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to Brian Laundry's thing in a second. Hold on. Um, <clears throat> Penelope, I'm looking at, th this is my, this is my process of how I usually do things. First, I just Google, and then usually we'll go to the Wikipedia and get like a brief synopsis of, of it. And, and the one you're talking about, the Wichita massacre is on, um, Wikipedia. Sometimes they're not on there. And it's a little more difficult. Um, the Wichita Massacre, also known as the Wichita Horror, was a week-long series of Randall, random brutal crimes perpetrated by brothers Reginald and Jonathan Carr in the city of Wichita, Kansas, between December 7th and 14th, 2000. Uh, five people were shot and killed. A woman was severely wounded. The brothers were arrested and convicted of multiple counts of murder, kidnapping, robbery, and rape. They were sentenced to death. Looks pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to bookmark that, Penelope. Um, does look like that's good. Um, <clears throat> sometimes there are cases that I really, really want to do, but there's just a lack of evidence. Or not evidence. There's, I mean, that too, but there's a lack of information. And no matter how much I dig, I can't find any more. So... Um, I need to bring the rap song back. I I forget I forget that I even have that. To be honest with you, um, the rap song I I both love and hate that rap song. Um, it's a 
I liked it at first, but then after a couple of times, I was like, well, that was a thing that, that I did. And I didn't do it, obviously. Um, but then I just stopped. I just stopped doing it. So, because I forgot about it. Okay, the Brian Laundry um, notebook. I don't think that there's a lot of information uh, about it at this point. Um, I haven't looked about it today, but I, I read up on it yesterday. And they're not releasing details of what he put in the, um, what he put in his little notebook, his diary, um, other than the fact that he is responsible for Gabby Patino's um, death. That's all they're saying at this point is that he is responsible, that he put that in his notebook. Um, so I'm sure there'll be more information at some point. I'm not, I don't know why they're holding it back uh, because he's not alive. So it's not like they're waiting for a court case to happen. Um, I don't know. I mean, you, I'm sure there's got to be a reason why they're not releasing all the information. Um, Maybe it's the family that they don't want to, they, they'll let them release it. Maybe, I don't know. But I imagine at some point it will get, it will get released. Lane, um, <clears throat> yes, I do, I do want more information. Um. You can message it to me if you want. If it, if it's easiest, you can message it to me or send it to me uh, via email. Ten minute murder at gmail dot com. And knowing your friends and family, um, <clears throat> that's cool that you that you're an expert in that, Kira. Taking my shoes off. Maddie, I appreciate you listening. Um, yeah, so if this is weird for you guys to actually see me talking, it's just as weird for me to be talking on camera. Um, so. And by the way, if you guys have questions about um, anything, I get I get questions every single day in my in my um, <clears throat> email and messages about just different random things, not just um, not just story ideas, but just random things about um, my dog. A lot a lot of Harper a lot of Harper uh, questions for some reason. Um, she's I say some for some reason, but people love dogs and she's the sweetest dog, the most lazy dog. And she snores near constantly when she's asleep. Um, <clears throat> I recorded it the other day because I was going to put it in an episode. But I'll let you hear it. This is her snoring while I'm trying to record. She really gets going. Is it? Yep. She sounds like a human being. And <clears throat> she's usually laying under my feet when I'm, when I'm doing this. And that sound just radiates from under. And I have to go, hey, you need to wake up or something. Stop snoring. Um, yeah, she was, so that was that was a couple days ago, and I was I was going to put it into an episode. I may not now. I don't know, but it's, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, Harper is not in this room. She's upstairs. I think um, my kiddo and I were watching um, right before this started, like m literally minutes before this started, um, which is why I was a couple minutes late. We were watching Neverending Story which I've seen 800 times, but he, he's only seen bits and pieces of it. Um, so we were watching that and Harper was up there asleep. So I think she just stayed up there. She does sound like a human. Um,
Okay, what what did you what did you guys expect me to look like? I don't. <laughs> that's, I mean, I understand how it was, you hear someone's voice over and over, and then you don't know what they actually look like. But then, um, when you see them, you're like, "Well, that's not what I expected." But I don't know what you expected. Um, Thank you, Jennifer, for being kind. Sorry, I'm reading messages. I'm trying not to miss. I'm trying to missing. Um, <clears throat> Leanne, um, I I'd like to think that I am down to earth, but I, in reality, I think I might be just um, more boring than anything. Yes, Sean, send me the article, and hope you enjoy your pizza. Um, how long does it take you from start to finish to complete an episode with research and script and all? <clears throat> uh, this that's it varies pretty a pretty good bit. Um, so it depends on how how popular the case is or how. Um, how many news stories have been done on the case? If there have been documentaries, um, I don't watch every single documentary if there's one available um, on the case because then that I think that kind of starts once I get all of the information. I think if I watch a documentary, then that pops in my head and I start um, verbatim quoting the documentary, and I don't mean to, and I don't want to plagiarize someone's documentary that you, that they've done. But you, it, inadvertently, you can do that just because you've been absorbing all this information from different sources. Um, <clears throat> so I would say, and by the way, I have someone that, um, that I pay, um, on occasion, I say on occasion, I, I pay them when I'm busy with my regular job more times than not. I will pay someone to do, um, a lot of the research and writing. I'll tell them what to, um, what to research and write. And I'll give them information and I'll give them kind of an avenue that I want the story to go into. Um, and then I'll get that back and I'll, and I put it, ooh, snap, I'll put it on my, like my iPad or something. And then I'll just go from there. And it's a script, but I'm kind of just winging it. If that makes any sense, it might as well be an outline. Um, Cause I don't ever read it verbatim because I just, I just say things. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, my DoorDash order was dropped off. I'll make sure he got that in a minute. Uh, so I would say on average two days from the time I start, if I were to just work on just that, um, I'd say two days because the recording of it doesn't take that much time. Um, let's see. Let me scroll back up. Penelope, are you hitting on me? Love listening. I, I, where do you guys work that you can listen to a murder podcast at work? Um, man. Um, answered that. You share your story about how you adopted your son. Um, maybe privately I can, Alexandra, I can share that, but um, I don't want to just put that all over the, the Beyonce's internet because um, parts of it are super private. But um, but, I mean, but just between you and I, I, I can share it, but I don't want to put it on here. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, I am boring, Sarah. What made you want to start a podcast on murder? Um, well, I grew up watching Unsolved Mysteries, and um, our family didn't we didn't miss it, and it was before, way before the age of DVR and TiVo and all that stuff. So if it was coming on, you had to be there in front of the TV watching it, and it was like a appointment TV for our family, and. 
the the my heater just kicked on and so I can still remember being just a little bitty kid and being super excited about unsolved mysteries coming on and watching that so I was ex I was into that into true crime and mystery and those kinds of things when I was little and then the OJ Simpson story happened um, and it was right there close to the Menendez brothers um, and then there was another one around that time I can't remember their names but it was in San Diego and it was some I think it was some swingers people or a, some, so there's some kind of murder involving that but anyway um, and court TV started to take off and I was I was deep into the OJ Simpson case um, and so that's where like the interest in true crime started and then I, I mean I like like you guys I, I watch um, documentaries on true crime and then I got into podcasts um, when serial was a thing um, I, and I just recently by the way I just recently re-listened to S Town um, which is about a little small town in uh, Southwest Alabama I believe and I'm in Alabama um, and I've been through kind of the area that he's talking about so it makes it kind of um, a little bit different um, so uh, podcasts I got into the the true crime podcasts and then my background is in um, like uh, radio um, like right out of college I did like 10 years on the radio which <clears throat> I mean it's fine but I mean it's it, it wasn't for me um, even though I did it for 10 years I um, had all of the recording gear because I do voiceovers um, and have since I've done radio since when I left radio I continued to do voiceovers commercial voiceovers and um, explainer videos and just all you name it I've probably done a voice for it um, and a friend of mine who also does a podcast I've mentioned before on this podcast um, uh, Casio his uh, podcast is called Casio's cut um, it's a great podcast uh, he and I were talking and he was like we were talking about his podcast and he was like you should do a podcast and I'm like I don't know what I would do it on and he was like well figure out something that you're interested in and do that and he's interested in comedy music and wrestling so that's what his podcast is about essentially he interviews comedians um, he interviews musicians and he interviews wrestlers and people around the wrestling world um, I don't care anything about wrestling um, not since I was eight years old I don't think so um, that's what um, that's that's the advice he gave me just figure out something that you are interested in and I was like oh okay maybe I might I might do that and then the pandemic happened and I was at home for forever because I'm still at home I've worked from home for the most part now um, probably like 90 95 percent of the time I work from home and um, I thought well I've got all this audio equipment I can I can maybe I can maybe see if I can do it uh, so I did a couple episodes and it was kind of fun and the the fun for me was in uh, researching the cases even though I knew what they were beforehand and then it caught on so quickly I was a little bit surprised um, and people people list people were listening like way more people early on because I know the stats of how popular podcasts are and how difficult it is to become a popular podcast um, and this one is in the I'm not I don't want to brag this isn't a brag but it's just a, a, a fact this one is in the top 1% of all podcasts um, and it gets between a hundred hundred and fifty thousand downloads a month um, which is fantastic um, and it continues to grow and it's a little bit overwhelming I'll be honest with you um, but I don't know that so that's why I got into it and I stayed into it because of you guys listening um, that made me want to keep doing it. I thought well hey this is something that people enjoy I like putting it together um, I don't always have the time to do all of the research and the writing so that's why I started um, hiring someone so <clears throat>
So there's that long-winded story. Sarah, uh, my regular job, I, <sighs> I'm hesitating because I don't know if I should answer that. Um, <clears throat> I am a, I'm a government contractor for, um, a space agency. I, <laughs> that isn't there. I don't want to say the name. Um, <clears throat> I direct and produce uh, video content for this place. That's my regular job. I direct and produce video content for this government space agency. Um, Mockingbird Hill Christmas Time is my favorite episode. My friend Destiny was the one who sent the story in from Arkansas. Yeah, um, I remember Destiny sending that in. That was a that was an interesting story. Destiny's good people. Um, where do you live? Kyle, that's weird, and I'm not going to answer that. I live in Alabama. I'll tell you that. Uh, with After what I just said, you could probably figure out where I live um, at my job. Um, thank you, Jessica. I love you, too. When are you going to come out with hoodies and shirts? Um, <clears throat> it's, it's taken longer than um, I anticipated. I wanted to have it uh, done by the beginning of this year, I wanted to have like stuff with my, um, with my logo on it before now, but then I got sidetracked cause I thought I'm going to do a coffee brand. I'm going to, I'm going to do like a, like a mail order coffee because I love coffee so much. Um, I thought that would be what I would do. Uh, but I didn't, I haven't done either one. It's just, it's, I think my kid fell down the stairs or something. Um, Let's see. Sarah, you work for a funeral home. Office of Child Support. So you guys must, if you're listening in an office, um, you gotta have, you gotta have headphones, I guess. Overnight cardiopulmonary nurses that I've heard, I've heard things about, um, about overnight, um, nurses as, as it, um, as a whole, I think that nurses have a dark sense of humor and you kind of have to being, especially now with, with COVID, um, you have to have kind of, um, a little bit of a, a twisted sense of humor and um, night nurses, overnight nurses I've heard are like the, the top of that list of, 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 of uh, dark humor. I bet you guys are busy, right? Have been the last couple of years. I've never done a, I've never done a sex hotline voiceover, Kara. Thank you very much. I said I've done just about everything. That would be the one thing that I have not done. I almost, I auditioned for um, FarmersOnly.com. Um, I auditioned for doing, to do the voiceover. And it wasn't like a, like some hillbilly voice. It was just like the, the normal FarmersOnly.com, like that kind of thing. Um, I auditioned for it. I didn't get it. I would have done it for free. They just don't know that. Um, how old are you? I'm, uh, mid forties, early, mid to early 40. How old am I? 44. I think I just turned, I think just turned 44. Thank you, Sean, for emailing that. Another night nurse. Yeah, you you uh you nurses in general, especially night nurses, are um, interesting. And Harper is upstairs. I think she's had it. She's had it for the evening. Um, she she sleeps. It feels like she sleeps the majority of the time, but when she's not sleeping, she's a hundred miles an hour all over the house. 
Um, let's see. So it, with the with the limited people in here, um, let me ask: Would you rather me put my efforts into um, coffee or hoodies, t-shirts, that kind of thing? I'll eventually do both, I think. Um, but for right now, to get started. <clears throat> Jesse, you listen on your loader <clears throat> with headphones. Loader. Like construction. You turn that all the way up because I'm not I'm not a, a loud talker. And also the thing about doing hoodies, I thought, well, by the time I get them all printed and done and, and all that, that, I don't want it to be um, too cold. I mean, I'm too, too warm to wear them, um, which is freezing right now. So it would be a perfect time. But by the time I got them um, approved and, and ready, I think it might be starting to warm up. So maybe T-shirts and stickers. Um <clears throat> Social workers. Yeah, I agree with the social workers um, thing, too. But the social the, the thing about the social workers and um, nurses, you have that that underlying empathy for everyone. And um, you can be saying the most mean thing to so, you are so mean to each other, but you understand that you, you're both kidding um, <clears throat> or or just saying it to be funny, whatever it is that you're saying. And it can be like the most if if you don't know that you're in the group with a bunch of social workers and nurses, you're like, wow, these people hate each other, but they don't, they love each other. They just understand each other's humor. Um, which is, which is cool to me. Cause I'm, I have that same type of humor. I, um, I just don't say it often. I don't use it very often. Um, cause I don't like arguing with people. People get offended and I don't mean to offend people. And that's the last thing I want to do is hurt someone's feelings. So I just shut up and I say it inside my head brain, my mind, uh, tank tops. And I'm not doing tank tops. This is not Panama city. Could do it. I could do an airbrush tank top for you. Like you got it on vacation. I've done zero research, by the way. Do I have a favorite 10 minute murder story? No. I have a least favorite, um, and I will tell you that one. And if you've listened for any length of time, you could probably guess what it is. And that is John Wayne Gacy. Um, that's the uh, that's the worst one. Um, my favorite one is the is always the next one I'm working on because it's one that I don't know all of the information about yet. So it's interesting to me to learn about doing it. So let me tell you the one since. You guys are here. Um, I'm the one, I've already mentioned the lady's name. Um, Darley. I've already forgotten her last, how to say her last name. Darley Routier. I keep wanting to say Routier. Um, it sounds like it's uh, Cajun, maybe French. Um, and it might be, I don't know, but it, Routier. And by the way, I've ended, this is a complete, ADD side note. Um, I've ended up on um, Louisiana TikTok somehow. How does that happen? Like every other video I look at on TikTok, um, it's sorry, I'm trying to hide my burp. Um, <clears throat> every other video I see in TikTok now are these Cajuns making food outside in these giant cauldron looking things and adding so much seasoning in this stuff like I, i'm a white person so we don't season our food properly like we should be seasoning our food um but cajuns know how to do it 
and I don't think I could, I don't, I don't eat a whole bunch of weird stuff as it is. So I wouldn't eat most of this stuff, but I've ended up on Cajun TikTok, and I don't know how to make it stop. I don't know that I want to make it stop, but that's where I am. Um, okay. So the one I'm doing next week, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Um, first one in the week or the last one of the week, but Darley Routier, um, <clears throat> Uh, she was charged in the death of her six-year-old son. And I don't really like doing um, kid murders like that. Those really bother me. Um, but I do them because people request them, and I figure if people are requesting them, then that's what they want to hear. So it's, the show's not for me necessarily. So the um, So that's the first one, and I'm pretty much finished with it. Not like recording. I haven't recorded a single word of it, but like the research part of it. Um, and then <clears throat> the next one is the Texarkana Moonlight Murders, um, which I almost did this one in October because um, I watched that movie from how old was that movie? Man, it was the seventies, maybe. There's a there's a movie about it. Um, the movie's awful. The acting is so bad. Um, so I didn't make it all the way through the movie. Um, but the story is really weird and interesting. Um, so the Texarkana Moonlight Murders, um, also it's a serial killer, also known as the Phantom Killer or Phantom Slayer. And that one is unsolved. I know as a whole, we don't really like unsolved cases because we don't, we like some closure that helps us sleep at night. But this one's unsolved, but uh, it happened a long time ago. Um, and we're fresh off the heels of the Ed Kemper, which, by the way, I didn't think would affect me the way that it did. Um, but Ed Kemper is completely deranged, and he's so smart that it's concerning. Um, like, as smart as he is, you would think that he would have known better like i don't i don't know i mean it's hard to say people have mental illness and it's you can't just make assumptions um but i'm trying to catch up on thank you justin alexander we don't argue we're just bossy and nosy um I'll agree with that. <laughs> you have to. I think you kind of have to be bossy and nosy in the in the world of um, uh, nursing and social work. Story of Montalvo. Is that how you say that? Montalvo. Um, Nicole Montalvo. Kyle, if you could email that to me or send it to me via message, um, I'll read up on that one. Yes, Sarah, you can, the guy with the wig, hat, and glasses, he's great. Lori, what are you talking about? Wig, hat, and glasses. Who has a wig, hat, and glasses? Jamie Cross. Cody, send that, send, uh, that one sounds familiar. Jamie Cross. Um, Cody, send that to me if you don't mind. Alexander, yeah, I've done, um, I've done the, um, DC snipers. Um, I did it year before last, maybe. Um, oh, you were in VA when it was happening. That had to be, that was a weird time. Like they were just shooting everybody. Like no, specific target in mind um yeah and there was an alabama connection to that one as well so I, when that was happening obviously it was way before i was doing the um podcast but i remember reading up on that because it was interesting oh cajun tiktok yeah <laughs> i'm gonna figure out a way to get off of cajun cajun tiktok and you would think i would be on um crime talk um, like, cause I look at so many, so many true crime things, but I'm not as deep into 
crime talk as I am. I'm Cajun talk for some reason. Um, Megan, you and your husband listen the road trips for your daughter's travel daughter's travel softball. Um, yeah, my my son used to play travel baseball, and I know how those road trips are. And those are not those are not the most exciting things. Um. He doesn't play. He doesn't play travel baseball anymore. Is it weird? Does it weird anybody else out, by the way? This is um, unrelated to anything we've been talking about. But is it weird that when you get food delivered to your door, they take a picture of it <clears throat> and send it to you? Like, bro, I know that you delivered food. I see it. Um, you don't. You know, they could be, I guess that's because people maybe um, will say, no, I never got that. And they'll eat it and, and I don't know, but maybe that's why they do it. I assume that's why they do it. But that's, it's just weird to me if I get a text or an email with a picture of my front door and there's a bag of food sitting, sitting there. Um, if you consider the Ken and Barbie Homoka murders out of Canada from the nineties. Yes. Uh, I have considered it and I have done that. Uh, they're like, they're almost, too, I, it, it's hard to find them sometimes. Um, but there are almost 200 episodes. Um, and that is one of them. It's titled the Ken and Barbie murderers, murderers, something like that. But it's, uh, it's in there. I did that one. That one is pretty disturbing. They delivered to the wrong door half the time. <laughs> Luckily, that doesn't happen to me. I'll fight someone over, over my food. Um, I'll straight up fight somebody. I won't, but I'll make you think that I'll fight you. Okay. wrong mouse i have a mouse that i also use on my ipad um and i and the, i've got a 50 50 chance of grabbing the right one i never i never grab the right one Have any of you, um, the Pulse nightclub murder? Oh, that's a good, I'm writing that down. I don't have a pen. Um, here. Have any of you watched the, uh, the season, the entire season of Dexter, by the way? Because I, <clears throat> I'm a little bit upset about it being over. Um, let's see. In the story that I'm working on, like it's off in the in the distance a little bit, um, is a killer that was obsessed with Dexter, Dexter Morgan and, um, Mark Twitchell is his name. Um, and he was like a screenwriter and he, he had some success in, um, 
filmmaking, like not a, not big success, but it's really super difficult to have major success in it. But um, he had some, and he wanted he wanted to have like to know what it felt to kill people. I get I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a quarter of the way through researching it, but it's an interesting story, and it's coming within the next couple of weeks, I think. Um, <clears throat> Mark Twitchell is that one. Yeah, the new blood ending was not what I expected either. Um, <clears throat> there are going to be no spoilers from me on this in case you haven't watched it. But what happened was not what I was thinking was going to happen. It was a little bit what I was thinking. I thought that the one thing, the one major thing was going to happen, um, but not in the way that it did happen, if that makes any sense. Um, and I'm such a fan of... Um, Michael C. Hall and uh, like I don't I don't know what to say that I don't so that I don't spoil it but I hope it continues um, and I think that it will in kind of the same vein that it has gone all these years um, but it's it's one of my favorite shows my favorite shows ever. Thank you, OG. My kiddo, by the way, we're talking about people that um, that drive trucks. We went to um, we went to Nashville not long ago, and we were heading back um, home. It was late at night, and there were a lot of trucks on the road, big trucks, eighteen wheelers, and. Um, <clears throat> We had this this long conversation about how difficult that has to be to be a, um, a long haul trucker and um, just staying awake and keeping yourself um, entertained for that long and focused. And because like when you're at home, you can go outside, you can flip on the TV, you can you know, go read a book or you can do you can do all these things. But if your job is sitting behind the wheel for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, does that? Man, it's difficult mentally, I think. Um, I don't think that a lot of people realize that. And the, those type, um, I think those 18-wheeler drivers, 18-wheel drivers, uh, those truckers, they have probably one of the most difficult jobs in that you can just hurt a bunch of people really fast if you just lose focus for a short amount of time. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on you. Um, just to do the bare minimum, um, and the bare minimum being not lose focus. So hats off to you, man, for, for doing that. Alexandra, are you trying to are you trying to dump on Dexter? Because I feel like that's what you're doing right now. You need to take that back. <laughs> um I need I need you to respond, Alexandra. Is it, are you trying to say that Dexter is not a good show? <clears throat> You're a real motor mouth a minute ago when you... Why watch something that isn't real? I watch all those shows too, by the way those A and E shows and those first forty eight, those type of things. I watched a lot of that. <clears throat> but I also I also like Dexter.
I'm also, by the way, trying to re respond to messages and such. Because apparently some people don't want, don't want to put their business on on the internet. So. Mary Lee, or don't, I must have missed it. Um, Jane, what did it say? I'm trying to scroll back, but I don't see it. Thank you, Jacqueline. Grab the wrong mouse again. Hannah, we are up to whatever in this live. I'm just researching cases and chatting with Anyone that wants to chat at the same time. In Little Rock, Arkansas in the 1980s. Is that a case? Let me look here. I can look this up on the Mary Lee or Guy. Because there's like next to nothing information-wise about it, which is strange, by the way. I'm several pages deep into Google now, and nothing good lives on page three of Google. I remember looking at this before. Uh, Jane, I'm going to bookmark that and, and look into it again a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> but it's one of those that's it's like pulling teeth just trying to get the most basic information about the case. Um, Wait a minute, Alexandra. Now you're now you're dumping on Harry Potter. You Dumbledore. I won't have that. I won't have that. Um, I read the Twilight books, and I'm going to say what everyone says about every movie that's based on a book ever. The books were better, obviously. Um, but the twilight and I don't know people people make fun of the twilight series but it was good Harry Potter was much better obviously but um I don't think you really can compare the two but it was good I prefer true crime but I can't I can't just read true crime and watch true crime all the time because then I'd be afraid for my life at all times because people are weird. Um, <clears throat> how often does the case get to you? Pretty often. Um, like way more often than I care to admit. Like um, 
there are times when I have to, like I'm in the middle of, when I'm researching it, it doesn't, it, 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 I don't want to say it doesn't bother me. It does bother me, but it doesn't bother me as much. But when I start saying it with words, I'm trying to like picture um, what's happening in the moment and um, that kind of thing. And I, and when I do that, it gets, it tends to get to me a little bit more. And especially if it involves children, um, that I can't, uh, that I can't deal with that. But it, it, pretty often, almost at least once a week, I have to stop in the middle of doing a podcast and just take like a, just take like a, a, a minute, get my mentals together before I can continue. Um, let's see. Black Widow. Holly Bobo. Yes, I've done, uh, I've done, I've done an episode on Holly Bobo. Israel Keys is a very good one. Super good one. Um, I just added that because someone asked um, last week, <clears throat> someone added, asked last week if I would do an episode on it. I added it to my list. Um, but that was one that, like earlier this summer, I considered it as well. But there have been podcasts out there that have done it. Obviously not in like the 10 minute murder um, way where I have to smoosh it all into 10 minutes. Um, but Israel Keys is a super good one. Um, it's on the list, and I will definitely do that one, Kyle. Dexter is one of the best shows ever. Penelope agreed. Um, Arrested Development is my... There's one A and one B, Dexter and Arrested Development. Those are my two favorite shows of all time. Okay, we have to stop. We have to stop talking about kids. Sarah. It's gonna get real whispery in here as I try not to cry. And I have to change subjects. Tell you guys all, all about how I was the lying leader for a whole week in third grade. Just stop talking about kids. This has gone on way longer than I anticipated. But... Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get close to wrapping up here. But um... Criminal Minds, um, obviously I've heard good things about that show. That show's been on TV for forever. Um, I haven't gotten into that, which is weird. That would, it, that would be a show that I would love. I'd love criminal minds in theory, but I just haven't gotten into that. Um, maybe that'll be one that I start to binge when, when all the good stuff is off of Hulu, Netflix and all of that. And I have, I'm, and I'm looking for something to watch. Um, so a case, a case that I'm also working on, um, I'm in the early stages of research and trying to figure out how it would work is, um, and I mentioned it and I thought about it talking about it earlier. I when I mentioned, um, 
how I got into doing a podcast. Um, when I mentioned uh, Casio's podcast, Casio's Cut, where he he talks about wrestling on there, and I I know nothing near nothing about wrestling, but Chris Benoit. Um, there have been multiple people request that I do an episode on Chris Benoit, who was um, a professional wrestler that um, killed his family and himself um, years ago, not and not that long ago. It was. Let me look it up. I'm standing here. Two thousand seven is when that happened. Um, a little longer than I remembered. Um, so I think I'm going to do an episode. I say I think. I know I'm going to do an episode eventually on Chris Benoit, but I want to do one of these like a facebook live but also put it on facebook youtube and have a guest and had that guest being um my friend cassio and um just haven't figured out how i'm going to make that work yet um and let him talk more about the world of wrestling and stuff because i know nothing about that and i don't i don't really care to to do a whole bunch of in, uh, in um, research about wrestling and all that stuff he would just know that kind of thing so i can talk about the the details of the case and the timeline of how everything happened and he could talk about um chris benoit's history and um like the kind of uh personality he was and that kind of thing i think that would be an interesting case and it obviously would not be 10 minutes because um as you've seen from this live i get windy i get long-winded i can talk and it's weird because that I do a 10 minute thing because I can just ramble and BS forever. Um, bye bye, Tammy. Thank you for, thank you for jumping on here. Anyway, so, um, I am, I've, I've told him before that he's going to, I haven't asked him if he's going to do an episode with me. I've told him that he's going to do it. So he's not, he doesn't really have an option. Um, and if he were to have joined this live, I would have made him, um, come on here with me. But, um, so Chris Benoit, that's, that's an episode that's going to happen. Um, and that's why I'm decided full transparency. That's why I decided to do this live is to kind of figure out, um, the logistics of doing a live episode and um, what it would look like kind of if he were involved in it as well in um, doing a whole story here. And I could take the audio from after the fact and then post it for everyone else that is, isn't a part of this. Um, so it's not like if you don't see the live, you'll miss it, but you'll, you'll see me, you'll miss me um, trying to hide my burp. Um, if you just listen to it later. Sorry, I'm getting an avalanche of emails at the moment. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I limit myself to 10 minutes, um, Hannah, because Otherwise, I would just talk and talk and talk about a story. I would, I, I would give you every single minute detail of everything that I know about an entire story if I didn't limit it to 10 minutes. Um, because I just have that, I'm that person. I'm that weird person that has to tell you every single detail of everything. Tour after the COVID? I don't know, man. I don't know. I love true crime podcasts so much, but if um, there have been there have been podcasts that have come to my town before, um, like on a live tour, and I'm like, eh, I'm not going to that. So I'm afraid that I'm, I'm afraid that there there are too many me's out there that would go. I love that podcast, but there's no way I'm going to go sit in a room with a bunch of weirdos and listen to that. Um, even though I am a weirdo, they would actually like it. But I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Maine. Lord have mercy. Um, I've never been to Maine. 
I've been I've been pretty close. The main would be cool. And I do like lobster. Yes, most podcasts are way too long. Um, even though I do love the long ones as well, I just don't have time to devote to them. Um, and I've mentioned it before, I just kind of tune out. Um, I don't, I'll get, if, if you start talking, if, if you're doing a podcast and you start talking about the details of the case, and then you go off on some kind of a tangent about um, some, even if you're still talking about the case, just something that doesn't interest me, I'll tune out. And before you know it, I've lost you completely. And I'm thinking about something else. And then I'm like, I have to go back now and listen to what this was. And then I'm like, oh, do I want to go back? And that's more time that I've lost. Um, I, I'm too in my head about it. Um, and so I have to be really focused um, to listen to those longer ones. And that's why I do a, a quick one is because I, it's, there were none at the time. I think there might be a couple now like that are shorter. Um, but at the time I started this one, there were no, there were no short ones. Um, and I know now why there were no short ones. Cause it's, it's really hard to make it short um, and get the information out there. That's interesting and tell the entire story. Sometimes it's impossible. Like with the, the one we just did last week, the um, Ed Kemper, um, it was impossible to do one episode. You can't do Ed Kemper in one. I mean, just barely do it in two episodes. Um, but I do, I do love the long ones, but I prefer the shorter ones. I think a happy medium would be like a 30 minute, 20 minute episode. And there's one, there's one, let me see if I can find it. Um, well, it's not in here. Of course it's not in here. This guy, did, did he, oh, it's right there. Um, those conspiracy guys. Um, they go for like four and five hours, sometimes six hours. They're like, no, absolutely not. Now, I listen to it some, but I don't listen to the whole thing because I just can't. I just can't listen to the whole thing. Um, I think that um, a friend of mine that does a true crime podcast, and I call her a friend. I, I, we've never met, obviously. She lives in another country, but... Um, uh, Natalie from Talk Murder with me. Uh, her episodes are 30, 40 minutes long, and she's fantastic at storytelling and research and writing. Um, and her episodes are all good. Um, she started out doing a true crime blog for the longest, and um, I've collaborated with her on some on some episodes. And um, that like she did all of the research and the writing for it. And um, you'll know if it's one, because I put all that in the show notes where I mentioned at the beginning and the end, um, but she's great at it. And so if you're looking for a longer podcast to check out, talk murder with me is a good one. Um, and those are like 30 to 40 minutes long. Uh, I love the humor. Yeah. And you're good. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, I, I, I'm glad that you like the humor uh, because I can't help it. Some things just come out of my mouth and I, I delete when I record it, I delete more things than I leave in. Like there's some stuff that I say that could be pretty out of bounds. Um, and I delete it because I, cause it's just me in my, just saying, you know, whatever pops in my head as it relates to the story. And sometimes it's funny. And sometimes I'm like, Ooh, that was, that might've been funny, but it, it was also probably pretty offensive. Um, I'm drinking uh, UFO White. It's a it's a beer, um, and that's why I keep burping. Um, yeah, some of those fake voices on podcasts hard pass. I don't like people that try to put on a voice. Um, I don't like when people try to act more creepy and more spooky than it what it really is. I'll I'll in, inject some emotion into it, um, but I don't. I don't try to make it all. You know. Dramatic sounding like I'm not I'm not putting on a play in a sense in, in a sense I guess I kind of am, but I'm but I'm just trying to tell a story, 
and not be monotone and boring. Maybe that makes sense. But All right. I think that I have probably talked longer than I should have. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go, and also because this is a um, stand-up desk, and I've been standing up for a pretty good while, um, I'm going to go sit down. Um, but I will say that I appreciate all of you for um, joining for this uh, for this little thing. And um, this being the first one, I'm glad that there were some people here to interact with while I um, did a little bit of research uh, and responded to some emails and messages and things like that. that. Like I said at the beginning, this is something that I do nearly every day, but I don't do it with an with, I don't do it with an audience. Um, and I'll do it more often. Um, but I'll tell you, I get a lot less research done when I'm talking to you, which I don't mind. Because, like I said, I do it every day. Um, so, anyway, uh, I appreciate you guys that have um, enjoy your door day. I didn't order anything for me. I mean, I didn't. It was just it was just a burger and fries for the kiddo. Um, Troby, I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Um, DoorDash apparently sponsored this this Facebook Live. Um, I'm going to do more of these as time allows. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to make you bored of hearing me, so I don't want to do it too much. Um, okay. All right, that's all. Um, again, thank you all for. Um, for jumping in here. This being the very first one, I'm, I appreciate any interaction at all on this. And, um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, new episode coming Tuesday, probably um, late, depending on where you live, what time zone you're in, um, late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, new episode um, that I'm putting the finishing touches on this weekend. Again, thank you for listening, and I appreciate you joining this live.